Oh, Hey everyone, I'm Blake and welcome to BM Sculptures. My initial inspiration for this is my two-year-old daughter's crayon box. It is piled with just scraps of crayons. I feel like she just breaks them more than she actually colors with them. So I have so many half and quarter pieces of crayons and this is just a good way to use those in a different way. And on top of that, I don't have enough. So I went to the store and I got three really big boxes of crayons. And now I start the tedious task of unpeeling every single wrapper from these hundreds and hundreds of crayons. And here is about the time I regret not getting the jumbo crayons because this is gonna take a very long time. And now that all the crayons are unwrapped, it's time to start working on the mold that I'm gonna pour them into. And I just use some scrap wood here with some tape on all the walls as well as silicone so the crayons don't stick. I'm just gonna use my barbecue with the side burner. I'm gonna get a really old pan and my plan is to just throw in all different colors of crayon, melt them and then pour them into the mold. And it's at this point, things are going great. I am really loving the color scheme on this and it just looks awesome. So I have really high hopes right now that this is gonna turn out perfectly exactly as planned. And then I get to the first pour and all of those beautiful colors mix into one ugly maroon color with little white blotches in it. And it's just a disaster pour number one. On top of that, I'm going to put the pan back on the burner and it just combusts. There's just flames everywhere. So I turn off the burner and I have to start thinking, how am I gonna get these flames out? So I think of what I think is a great idea. Let me just throw some more crayons on here, all the same color, and it'll probably take out that flame. Well, as soon as I threw more crayons on, that flame actually got even bigger. And mind you, the burner is not on. There is no flame underneath this pan. So this fire is just getting bigger and bigger as time goes on and this is a minute later and it's still just a raging fire and here I'm just debating well I have all this crayon let me just get the crayon out so should I pour it and I keep going back and forth do I want to pour it do I want to leave it what am I going to do here I'm close to the house the barbecue is right next to the wall um, and here I'm going for it let's pour this thing in flaming and things did not get any better doing this. It is a flaming crayon liquid pouring into this wooden mold. Not the best situation. I have a fire inside the mold. I have a fire inside the barbecue, inside the pan. Look at this smoke going all over the walls. I even have a wooden overhang here uh, that I'm really worrying about. So I kick into gear. I throw all my daughter's toys out of the way so I can wheel this barbecue out in the open and finally get this flame under control. And it's at this point, I wanna say, do not try this at home. This is not a good idea. And about a half hour later, the flame finally dies down and I go assess the situation. I definitely have some smoke all over the wall. Um, I think it's just smoke and it'll come off, so that shouldn't be a problem. Here's my new strategy. I'm putting a cooler with uh, cold packs in there so it cools the crayons as I melt them. I then get my map gas, which is hotter than propane. Probably another stupid idea, but let's just go for it. And I fill up these little, um, probably three crayons at a time, and then I'll melt it and pour layers of each color in this mold. And it's going okay. I mean, the colors are still mixing. Uh, I still have flames, as you can see. So this is kind of just disaster after disaster. I've kind of just tallied this one up as a loss. Um, but we're going for it. We're going to see how this thing turns out. And I ended up running out of crayons, so I got seven more boxes of crayons to fill this mold completely to the top. Once it was completely full, I shut the cooler top and let it sit overnight. And here's the next morning. It's completely dry, uh, not hot to the touch anymore. So thank goodness there is no more fire worries. We are done with that. And I don't know if I'm ever doing that again. 
Here's the unmolding here, and it's coming out really, really good. Um, better than I thought, actually. The colors didn't mix as much as I thought they would. Um, you could see coming up here very shortly. Look at all these different colors. So it actually looks pretty cool, and it worked better than I thought. But now is the really hard part where I'm going to carve a sculpture out of this. So the first thing when carving a sculpture is you want to take off just bulk chunks that aren't going to be used. And I don't know what to use, so I'm just using here a handsaw and it is not working well at all. This one side took me probably 20 minutes. So then I switched to a chisel and the chisel's definitely taken off chunks, but right here I cracked the entire thing in half just to add more problems to my situation. So. What do I do? I heat up both sides with map gas and I hope that just liquid crayons will act as a glue and I try and hold them together as tightly as I can and surprisingly it actually worked really well. Now it's on to finer chiseling and these are just like little wood carving chisels and here I don't run the risk of making big cracks or fractures because I'm just taking off tiny little chunks um, at a time and and that's kind of how I whittle down this sculpture Now this is a very very messy situation, but I got to be honest. It is really really fun to work with I mean, this is so much easier to carve than wood or foam And it's just actually really fun to carve because it's so smooth I mean, I've never carved soap or wax before but I I'm pretty sure it's basically the same thing and uh Again, I'm just kind of pleasantly surprised with how this thing carves with woodworking tools. And this just gets me kind of curious. I would love to hear if any of you do soap carvings or candle or wax carvings. What kind of tools do you guys use? Because I have no idea what to use. Um, and I'm sure that would be basically the same consistency. So that would really help me out. Let me know in the comments if you've ever carved anything like this. And here I'm just using a little smaller chisel to carve the details of the face. And can you guess what this is yet? I hope you can, uh, but we'll see. You never know. Um, here, I'm just kind of refining more details. This is probably two hours in, um, and then I use this little scraper thing kind of to smooth everything out. Just when you thought I was done playing with fire, I'm a little pyro, so I need a little bit more. So here, I'm just using the torch and trying to smooth out all those carved marks, and it actually worked really, really well. Now the only thing left to do is to test it out. And the cool thing about this is it is a multicolored crayon. I got different colors on the legs, the ears, the back, the butt, the tail. I got all these different colors that I get to use and this is basically the best crayon ever made, a universal colored crayon. So Crayola, if you're watching this, let me know if you wanna start production. I'm ready, let's make it happen. And here it is, the finished bear sculpture carved out of 500 melted crayons that almost cost me my house. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out all my other videos and please consider subscribing. I'm Blake from BM Sculptures. Have a good one.